वर्णिवे शर्मणीयदर्शन मंदहासुचिराननाबुज पूजित सुरनरोतमुदा धर्मनंदनमह विचित धर्मनंदनमह विचित श्री हरिकृष्ण महाराज नी जय श्री घनश्याम महाराज नी जय श्री स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय Almighty Supreme Lord, our beloved Gansya Maharaj, path maker to our liberation, our Puja Path Guruji, all of your duties and my humble Jai Swami Narayan. Last Sunday we have discussed about 136 chapter of Bhakta Chintamne in which Sadguru Nishkuran Swami talking about a devotee whose name was Jivaram and he was a Brahmin by caste and he was lived in village of Makaner and how Bhagavan Swami Narayan protected him from terrorists and uh, how he, he could save his life because of Bhagavan Swami Narayan's divine pleasure at the time of misery and all of what he encountered misery and everything else. Now, today in the same chapter 136 of Bhakta Chintamani, Sadguru Nishkudan Swami wrote here the another incident happened in life of such another devotees. This is a different kind of incident because this is not a man-made misery or this is not any kind of accident or nothing else. But this is a real story and this is encounter to devotees of Bhagwan Swami Narayan in such a situation that in which not a, an ordinary person can even even imagine Im imagine what uh, what had happened at the time. This is the most famous incident in our sampraday. First of all, there are two types of persons in the world we can see. The first type of person that is those who are non-believers and the another types that is the believers. Now, the, the two types of person they are because of their karma, their action. If the person is performing good action, he is known as a good person and on the other hand, if a person he behaved very badly or not acting as a good man that all kinds of persons they are they are known as a, an evil person now if a person perform a good action in this life then what can be the result the first He was uh, understood by the others as a good person and those who perform a bad action or some not human like action then those person they are known as a uh, evil person. Now but after death those who had performed good action in this life they either sent to heaven or if the person is devotee of any Bhagwan or then they definitely be sent to the divine Abara Bhagwan. Now on the other hand, the non believer, those who are an evil person, after performing bad action in this life, they definitely will be sent to hell. And we know in the heaven and in the divine abara of Aksardam, uh, there is only divine happiness, nothing else. But on the other hand, in the hell, there is nothing but the misery. There is only misery, nothing else. Pain and no more than that. Not the pain which we can feel in this life. 
in this art but the pain that is beyond one's imagination now the these two types of persons they send to heaven and hell but how they send to uh, how they send to heaven or hell this is the most important thing because at the time of death the point of death was the very very miserable time period in in life of human but not in life of duty because in the at the time of death in the life of duties of bhagwan swami narayan bhagwan swami narayan himself or bhagwan himself along with some santo and devotees appear there near to the person who are now living this earth and bhagwan himself came to him to bring him aksardham now on the other hand those who are evil person they are not sent to aksardham or heaven or any other divine place but those evil persons they definitely be sent to he- to hell and then the question arises now the devotee is sent to aksardham or any other divine abode of bhagwan and at the time bhagwan or the attendants of bhagwan came to that person and they came specially to bring that person to divine abode of aksardham or in other divine abodes but when a person who, who are evil person they sent uh, they be sent to hell and at that time the attendants of the death god they are known as yamduts they came to that person and they specially came there to bring that person uh, in hell and in the hell there is nothing but only pain and misery this is what the real situation real theory or real practical things happen in day to day life on this earth this is the f- fact described in the scripture but those who believe this system they are known as believer and those who do not believe in this system they are known as non believers now the believers they are the devotees of bhagwan and they have from faith in the words of bhagwan as well as in the scriptures now those non believers they have no belief in god or they never believe in the existence of god and that is why they are known as non believer now this is what the our scriptural system but in this incident sadguru nishkuran swami written the example of this incident now once upon a time there was a small village named golida and in that village uh, the whole village of the villagers of this golida village they are are devotees of bhagwan swami narayan but only a single person he was not a uh, he was not uh, he was a non believer and that's why he had no any kind of faith in bhagwan as well as he had not only this but he he did not even walk on the path of righteousness he had all kind of bad things in his life that is uh drinking alcohol uh eating meat adultery all these bad things in his life but the except this person all of the other villagers they all are worshiping bhagwan swami narayan and they all have from faith in bhagwan swami narayan and that is why they all follow each and every command of bhagwan swami narayan either written in the shiksha patri or spoken by bhagwan himself now once upon a time the four brothers they are also they were living in this same village 
the name of these four per, uh, th four brothers they are first bhim uh, second vasram third one is ragav and fourth one is rano now these four brothers they are staunch follower of bhagwan swami narayan and they are the senior in the village not in age but as they have attained a higher spiritual state and that is why they are the senior in devotees now as they have attained the divine spiritual power and that is why they can see uh, what the other cannot meaning once upon a time uh, the those the only non believer in the village just uh, his last time is just near at the day of his last uh, meaning his the day of his death these four brothers they so from the sky some yamduts the attendants of the dead god they came to their village now they ask they discuss four brothers they discuss each other how can this possible all of the, our villagers they are uh, we all are devotees of bhagwan swami narayan and how can this attendants of yamdu uh, yamraj meaning the dead god how can they came to our village how is it possible then finally they came to this uh, came to decision that the non believer for non believer they might become here in our village now but they decided as we are devotee of bhagwan swami narayan that's why that non believer had darshan of all of these our devotees and that's why due to this merit we should not leave that person even though he was a non believer still not on this birth but in another birth he will become a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan that's why we should not leave him alone and we should not uh, we should not let those yamduts meaning at an attendance of dead god to patch that person from here to hell and that is why after deciding this the beam and rano this two brothers they are very brave and they challenge those yamduts now at the outskirts of the village beam and rano these two brothers they have no any other weapon they have a heavy long stick in their hands now they stand out uh, at the outskirts of the village and those yamdus when they try to enter the village they challenge him now two brothers stop those yamdus and say you cannot enter into into this village because this is a village which which follow each and every command of bhagwan swami narayan and we are devotees of bhagwan swami narayan that's why you cannot enter into this village those yamduts meaning the attendants of dead god they may they try to make understand this uh, beam and rano that you are not doubt duties of bhagwan swami narayan and that's why we cannot do anything to you but we are specially coming here to bring that non believer to hell because he had not doing any single action in this life which is meritorious and that is why due to his sin we are coming here to fetch him in hell but bhim and rano they said we are a duty of bhagwan swami narayan and that is why we finally said you stop here and not enter our village and go back to your uh, go back to your dead god then those attendants of uh, yamdut uh, yamraj this uh try to make some conversation with uh to with uh, beam and rano and they said no doubt you are a devotee so you you can only control your home not hold the village this is a non believer he he was a sinner but these brothers these two brothers they said no we are a devotee and if you want to 
take that person that evil person to hell first you should fight with us then first beam and rano they decided to fight and that's why first beam had where these both brothers they were very brave and that is why first beam have hit uh, his have a stick and on one of the yama uh, one of the yams mouth and one of his tooth came out from his mouth fell down on the earth then all the other yamduts they become very terrible as well as they have some fear in their mind that if we fought with these two person we will not live more and that's why they all run away now many years ago at the time of our puja dada guruji the residents of santo at junagar that due to any fire that whole residence the building fire uh, burned to ashes and in that residence bi- residential building of santo in junagar this tooth of this yamdut that was collected in in a museum but because of anyhow there was fire and the whole building that was a food and building that burn away and that's why we cannot have that tooth but there are many devotees even they are in our satsang they have seen this tooth of yamdut and that is why this is a real story not uh, any fiction or nothing else this is a real story this is what the bravery of bhagwan swaminarayan's devotee as well as the divine power of bhagwan swaminarayan's devotee because not anybody else or an ordinary person can see yamduts with their own eyes only two person can see this one who is very very mature very high in spirituality and the other who was very evil and sinner and at the at the time of death only he can see the yamduts they specially coming to him and bring him to uh, uh, hell for pain and misery but bhim and rano and vasram and raghav they all these all four brothers they are very mature in spirituality and that is why they can have this divine power to see those yamduts not only that but they challenge those those yamduts and even fight and win now after that this incident after many many years when rano the the younger brother amongst these four brothers he was uh because of his old age now his date is coming he was uh, he had only single day to live on this earth but as he was very mature and high on spirituality that is why he knew that tomorrow bhagwan swami and himself with muktanand swami gopanand swami and other santo he himself will come to me and bring me to aksardham and that is why he had announced in his house as well as in the village that whoever want to come with me to aksardham be ready tomorrow bhagwan swami and himself will come here in my how in my home and he himself bring me to his aksardham and that is why whoever wants to come with me to aksardham be ready now not doubt the villagers all were the devotees of bhagwan swami and but still nobody would ready to go to aksardham but rano's mother as well as one of his son this two person they were ready to go to aksardham and that is why next morning when bhagwan swami had come to rano's house and 
Bhagwan Swaminarayan and the other Santo, they come. Rana declare, now Bhagwan Swaminarayan and Santo, they, they are appear here and that's why now I am going to Aksardham with Bhagwan Swaminarayan. And not only Rana, but as he had spoken to the villagers, his mother as well as his son, they also went to Aksardham with Bhagwan Swaminarayan. Now this is the reality as well as the divine power of Bhagwan Swaminarayan's devotee. Now consider or compare with the other avatars of Bhagwan. Now there are many many avatars like Ram, Sri Krishna, etc. But you have never listened even even a story that any other devotee of any other Bhagwan have such divine power. This is a divine power because of Bhagwan Swaminarayan is a supreme God and that is why by worshipping him a devotee can attain such divine power which cannot even we can see in any scripture or any scripture or any history that any other avatar has such power. And that is why Bhagwan Swaminarayan is the supreme Lord. Now there are many other incidents written in this 136 chapter. And the another incident, one lady in one of village in near Gadda, but he had uh, he had many many desire in her mind, and he had fulfilled all her desires. But amongst that, he, she had a desire to eat a human meat, and her eating human meat desire. That was not fulfilled while she was living and that's why after death she became a ghost one who has any kind of uh, bad desire in uh, in person's mind that person become a ghost definitely after death and that's why this lady also become a ghost in uh, after her death now as she had a desire to eat human meat and that's why he entered into Mandudar village. Nobody can see her and that's why one after one, one person to another, he enter as we know ghost can enter into uh, anybody's body and that's why she enter the one body and eat her meat and that's why that person become dead. He, that person cannot live more. Now in this way, one, two, three, fifty, sixty, seventy, many, many persons, one by one, and suddenly without any disease, without anything, and this much person, they meet death without any reason and that's why the, those who are devotees of Bhagwan Swaminarayan in that village they decide, uh, and amongst those devotees who are very high in spirituality that per, uh, that devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan can see that this is uh, nothing but the ghost and he see, this is, she was a lady and she had a desire in her mind to eat human meat and that's why those group of devotees from Mandavdar, they went to Gadda for Darshan of Bhagwan Swaminarayan and they requested Bhagwan to come to our village and they narrated their problem. And Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself, along with the group of Santo, Bhagwan as well as Santo and devotees, when they entered to this village Mandavdar, then that, that lady ghost, they run away from the village, and after that, she never eat any. Uh, they never uh, she never kill any person, and uh, because of he had darshan of Bhagwan and Santo, she after completing his sin and his uh, bad actions, after that. She, uh, she, she would send, uh, she would be sent to Badrik Ashram, and there he performed penance. And after many many years, she would be 
redeemed from her this kind of action and she would become a devotee of bhagwan swaminarayan and after many lives in this way she got a ultimate liberation this is what 136 chapters many many incident we have read and listen now in this way after explaining this four incident sadguru nisrudan and swami concluded this 136 chapter shri ganeshyam maharajani jay प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समीपे रहो अमारी एह घनश्याम महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ऑल माइरी Our beloved Gansham Maharaj, Pujya Pada Guruji, Pujya Santo and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. Continue on, on last week's lecture on Nilka and Verni. We were looking at a total of four categories and we ended up finishing two. We called this lecture Nilka and Verni's Kalyan Yatra. In the first two categories we saw how Nilkan Verni displayed fearlessness amongst wild animals in the jungle even encountering encountering that lion in Tripur where he was not daunted and he tamed the lion lion like he knew it for years on not only that but performing austerities meaning tap in mukti muktinath for two and a half months on one leg without any water or without any food such kind of severe penance for his devotees of the future continuing on there's two more categories that we have to fulfill in order to really realize how great Nilkan Verni was in his yatra and as a character So moving on to the third category today tyag meaning renunciation now renunciation is a higher level word so just to break it down make it easy renun to renounce or renounce is to let go or abandon or in a tougher manner to deny now Nokan Verni possessed this feature this virtue like no other if we can say he was the idol of renunciation or tyag and he showed it through many many things first and foremost how could i display it more than tell you about how he left his home just imagine an 11 year old boy an 11 year old boy who whose parents had just left their mortal mortal body and went to akshardham an 11 year old boy who 
just now has his two brothers and a couple of relatives. 11 year old boy, after having such kind or going through such kind of circumstances, has a thought that now I must leave this place and go on a journey, travel throughout India and liberate countless souls. Let me ask you a question. If you were in that exact position, or not only that, suppose when you were 11, what kind of thoughts were you having? You probably didn't have to go through any of these kind of circumstances, but what kind of thoughts were you having in your mind at that time when you were 11? Let me give you a couple of examples. Probably thoughts of playing games, playing with your friends, some even thoughts of studying hard. Some have dreams of becoming doctors or lawyers in the future. Such kind of things have been put into one's head. Due to that, such kind of thoughts occur. But Milton Verney was no ordinary child. At the age of 11, Milton Verney, or you can say Gunsham, at that time, decided to embark on his journey with only one piece of cloth a pot of water a mara and a gutko a small book and to go on a journey to liberate countless souls what is this an idol of? this is definitely the idol of renunciation or tiag we can see in his life that was the first form of tiag or first form of denial towards the world that he displayed for all of us to witness and to not exemplify so much so just to understand his greatness now not only that but Milgan Verney when he was traveling throughout the forest he would often say from experience Tiage so age meaning offers and temptations follow those who renounce meaning those who ever let go always pleasures of materialistic pleasures always come to him now what kind of pleasures did Nilkan Rooney Tiag or let go of? Well, honors and praises, kingdoms and kingship, women and wealth, all were offered in abundance to Nilkan. But he re he remained aloof, dismayed, not swayed by any of these pleasures. That was his true greatness. At such a young, tender age, displaying such kind of understanding, displaying such kind of level, spiritual level, is really true greatness. Obviously, no ordinary person, or I can say soul, can display these kind of features at such an age, meaning that this has to be God himself to display such kind of, of attributes at such a young age. Now just think about it. Kingdoms and kingship, women and money, all these things were he encountered on his way or they were given to him or they were forced by kings and kingdoms and queens, yet he denied everything. He abandoned everything. He let go of everything, proving his greatness. Let me give you an example, a modern example, to really fit. Because right now, as young teenagers or young adults, we're not given kingdoms or any kind of kingship to be thrown to us or to surrender on our feet. But let me give you an example. Suppose you were just given a single credit card. Your parents said, here, you can use this credit card. They didn't give you a limit 
to how much you can use it. They just said, here, use this credit card. Or they gave you a checkbook. Or they gave you hard cash money. Just a little amount. Yet, how much allured would we be? I'm talking about young teenagers here and young adults. I'm not even talking about such a young boy at the age of 11 or 12 or 13. No, I'm talking about 18, 19 year olds, even 25 and up, let's say. Given just a credit card and a checkbook, how much would our mind be lured by it? How much would our mind be swayed by it? Yet, this was just this is just a small example in our day-to-day -day life. But getting back to our point here, Milgan Verney was just given and thrown tons and tons of wealth and you can see sovereignty and power and kingship yet without even a thought arising, without even a slight display of attraction he threw it away like it was garbage. This was his true greatness. If Nilkan had wished, if he had wished, he could have ruled over vast and various kingdoms throughout the land of India. He would have had as many women as he wanted at his feet. He would have had as much as wealth as he wanted, but Nilkan Verney was on a different mission a mission to liberate numerous souls from this life and death and to take him back to his Akshardham. Due to this, he was not dismayed. Due to this, he was not swayed. There's a moral to be learned here. Looking at how many obstacles came in Nolkan Verney's way, kingdoms, women, wealth, he had one goal in his mind, and that's all he was looking at. You know, I didn't know, I don't know if you knew, but, or have you have seen, but in horse races, in Kentucky Derby, meaning Kentucky Derby is a horse race that occurs every year in the state of Kentucky. It's very famous. And many, many millionaires and billionaires bid on horses that will win for probability and to win more money. It's kind of like gambling. Those horses, that are supposed to race have stables that they go into in the start off in the starting point and then when the stables are released then the horses run the race before they go into the stables they have these special kind of you can say not glasses but covers that go into or on the side of both of their eyes so they don't see from any other direction but straight meaning to keep them on track to keep them on focus in the same exact way Nogan Verney had one focus and one goal in the same exact way in our life when we turn to a mature age when we have some kind of understanding we should have some kind of goal in our life you can say since you are living in the world one goal supposedly that I want to become a doctor. That's my goal. To please Bhagwan, Guruji, Santos, in that fashion. And on a spiritual term, have a goal of I want to become ekantik. I want to become someone that is very pleasing for Guruji in that manner. Such kind of goal setting really keeps one motivated and really keeps one on target but how can one stay on target by looking at this example of Nilkan Verney not only that but Bhagwan has spoken in the Vachnamrut Gadada last chapter 13th Vachnamrut that it is this realization that allows me on seeing the riches and royal opulence of the great kings of the world to not associate even the slightest amount of significance to them in my heart. Indeed, I believe that for me there is nothing greater than God, and so my mind is firmly attached to His holy feet. Such kind of understanding. 
Not only that, Maharaj goes on. He says also, the natural inclination, natural, meaning something that's just natural. It's easy flowing. There's no thinking to it. Of my mind is such that I do not at all prefer to live in cities, in mansions, or in royal palaces. On the contrary, I very much prefer to stay where there's forests, mountains, rivers, trees, or some secluded place. I feel that it would be nice to sit alone in some seclu secluded place and meditate upon God. That is what I prefer at all times. Wow. Such a motivating talk for, I guess you can say, the future devotees. But Bhagwan is showing us what he wants us to become or be like. He is talking about his own life, about how he has no interest in living in cities or mansions or whatnot. But he is talking about how he prefers to only meditate upon the idol of God in a secluded area. He wants us to become something similar to this so we can stably and successfully attain Akshardham. Not only that, but now getting into Nilkan Verni's travel. Nilkan Verni came, came across a king by the name of Ranjit Si. Now he was a valiant ruler of Punjab. And Ranjit Si was obviously a king and he was traveling and going to Badrinath, Badrinath where he met Nilkan Verni on the way. Now there, because of Nilkan Verni's aura, his glow, he was very, very stubbed. And there and there, he said, please, I want to become yours. I want to become yours. Keep me with you and be always with me. But Nogan Verni had to move on. So he told Ranjit Si that I'll meet you in the future, but I have to let go of you right now. Ranjit Si gave up and after in the future, he met Maharaj in Haridwar. And there again, the Sikh ruler sat at the feet of Nilkan Verni and said, Maharaj, I want to give up my whole kingdom for you. My whole kingdom is at your feet. It's everything is yours. Right there, Nilkan Verni denied, showing his form of idol of renunciation. He said, no, I cannot accept your kingdom because I'm on a mission that's far greater than anything on this earth, you can say. But he saw how much bow or how much emotion he had or how many good feelings he had towards Nilkan Verni. So Nilkan Verni blessed him and said that remember me when you rule your kingdom and you will not be bound by your kingdom, meaning your wealth and your majesty, you can say. After his blessings, Ranjit Si experienced extreme bliss and went to Maharaj's Akshadam. But seeing the story that an actual king giving up everything at Maharaj's feet, Maharaj did not accept anything and he done, denied, proving his greatness again. And in the Vachnamrut, Karyani 10th chapter, Maharaj even said that during this period, I have come across countless devotees who have been offering a countless variety of clothes, jewelry, food, and drink. Despite this, my mind has never been tempted by any of those objects. Why? Because I have zeal only for renunciation. Zeal meaning enthusiasm, a drive, a force only for renunciation. That's why we can call Nilkan Verni the idol of renunciation. And due to this, his, you can say, penance is now really showing in his true saints as of right now. Our Pujipad Guruji, how could we forget him in this topic? Even after having numerous 
sanstas or establishments throughout the world. Puja Guruji, as of right now, is at the highest post you can say in a temple, which that temple controls over, I can say, 500 other small and big temples, but such a post, yet, if you see where Guruji lives, or if you see what he wears, or if you see even what he keeps with him, even in his travels, he keeps only his puja and two pairs of clothes, that's it, nothing else. How could we forget how great of a saint we are living with? We talk about Nilkan Verni, we learned his greatness, but remember, even according to the Vachnamrut, if we can develop the same kind of mahima or you can say greatness that or feeling we have of past saints as we have of right now, then there's nothing else to be done on the path of liberation, according to the Vajramrut. So, Pujipad Guruji's greatness is beyond anyone's comprehension or imagination. Not only that, but now moving on to our fourth and final category, Kalyan, or also known as liberation. Nilkan Rini's main purpose of leaving home behind, of doing this severe penance, of denying everything in the world, or any kind of money, wealth in the world, was to perform the Kalyan, or to liberate numerous souls, devtas, avatars, sadhus, mahans, sannyasis, kings, ghosts, animals even. And that's what he did throughout his 12,000 kilometer journey around India, throughout his seven year span throughout India, he liberated numerous souls. And due to that, today we are actually, you can say, taking the fruits and eating them while Nukan Verni had to go through much, much harsh, you can say, not penance, but just a harsh road to get to where we are right now. But just to make a point of how severely he, or how hard of a task he had at that point, Nukan Verni made it easy. There's a story where Nilkan Verney traveled and he, was, he traveled in the city or I think it's the village of Kamakshi and there in that small village there lived a Brahman the Brahman was good at heart in his early days but due to some evil company he became very bad he started drinking alcohol, eating meat he even started practicing black magic and through that black magic he started to abuse younger saints and other saints and scare them through his black magic. And if they did not convert, he would abuse them and torment them un until they would convert to his side. And he would keep these kind of disciples everywhere and travel and abuse more and more devotees, saints, and whatnot. And at one time, Milkan Verney was resting outside of a village with other saints, good saints you can say. And Pibek was his name, found out that Nilkan Verni was there. He decided to go and start to make threats towards those saints. So Pibek went there and started making threats at the saints that take off your chanlos, you know, take off your whatever you believe in, throw it all away and surrender at my feet. The saints all became afraid because they knew that Pibek was a very, very powerful man. But Nilkan Verney there, just like, was not daunted or not even hear those words. He stood very firm and steady. And Pibek saw this and he was discouraged. He thought that it was an insult that this Nilkan Verney was not scared by his threats. So he started to focus on Nilkan Verney and make threats that you're just a little boy, Milkand. 
You don't know anything. Surrender down to my feet. Milk and Rooney laughed. So, Pibek decided to show him his powers. So from his sack he had, he took some grains and, you know, said some spells and threw the grains at the ground. And there, a banyan tree in the back just died in a couple of seconds. Nogunverni looked at the banyan tree and again laughed at Bibik. He knew that Bibik at heart was good before, but due to his evil influence, he was just phased a little bit. So after some time, again, Bibik got even more upset because Milken Verney is laughing and it seems insulting to him. So again, he took some grains and murmured some uh, spells and threw the grains on the ground. And dreadful ghost supposedly came from the smoke and Bibik told them to attack Milk and Verney. As soon as they were going to attack, they stood still. And Milk and Verney looked at the ghost. And again, the ghost turned back and attacked Bibik. Bibik fell to the ground, and then stood back up and got even more enraged. After getting more enraged, he started to call off, you can say the demon Beirov, he was called, and told him to attack. And again, Beirov attacked Bibik. Lastly, after getting very upset, he called upon Mahakali and Maruti. And there, Maruti and Mahakali, uh, Mahakali said to Pibik that Nilgan Verni is the Supreme Lord. Surrender unto his feet. But Pibik could not accept these words. So Mahakali and Maruti completely gave a thrashing to Pibik. And finally, after giving him a thrashing, Pibik surrendered unto the feet of Nilgan Verni and there Verni Raj he said Pibik I will only accept you as my devotee only if you give up black magic and give up your bad habits and become my disciple and after that time Pibik gave up everything and became a great devotee seeing this example his liberation was granted now we looked upon the four points and four categories. I'm going to conclude upon number one, fearlessness, number two, austerities, number three, renunciation, and number four, liberation. These four categories combined made Milken Verney something more ordinary or something more extraordinary in the eyes of devotees and non devotees, not only throughout India, but throughout the world, as you can say. Now, the whole moral of this lecture and last week's lecture is that if we cannot develop these kind of qualities in our heart, which ones? Fearlessness or renunciation or liberation or tyag, that's not as important as realizing that such a God who possessed these kind of qualities is supreme overall because no other past avatars have or possessed such kind of greatness at such kind of age and such had done such kind of features in the future as well in short understand the greatness of Nilkan Verni and understand that Bhagwan Swaminarayan is the supreme lord of all lords and due to that one will also be liberated from this life and death. Saying this, my humble Jay Swaminarayan. Shri Patim Shri Dharam Sarvade Vishwaram Bhakti Dharmatmajam Vasudevam Hare Madhavam Kesavam Kamadam Garam Swaminarayanam Nail Kandam Baj Gansham Maharaj.